Hey everyone, it's uh, Emo Panda. This is my first live commentary, so don't hate too hard. Uh, a few of my friends have asked me uh, about my specific loadouts for each class, so I'm going to kind of go over them briefly and uh, kind of show you what I use for uh, different maps and different situations. So to start out with the Assault, um, I primarily use the CZ805. Uh, I like it because of its uh, relatively easy to control recoil. Uh, decent rate of fire and it's fairly accurate. Um, the reason I choose that over the, let's say, the Ace 23 or the M416 is that uh, people don't cry as hard about being killed with this than the other two. Um, for optics, uh, I prefer the Cobra sight. Uh, I like the, the three reticle rather than the red dot. I find that the red dot gets uh, easily lost in overly bright situations whether you're looking at that beaming sun or uh, lots of fire uh, you can kind of lose it so more saturation I like the, uh, the three prongs it's easier to keep your targets in your in your reticle uh, accessories um, this is kind of preference um, I tend to run either the laser sight or uh, if I have it unlocked I'm a big fan of the tactical light but I mean it, it, the magnifier is kind of a waste. If you ask me, you're better off using a laser, even though it does give away your position, but you, you get a, that better hip fire. Um, for my barrel attachment, depending on the map, um, I usually run uh, the muzzle brake for that just increased uh, reliability for the, the recoil control. Uh, heavy barrel I stay away from because uh, the increased muzzle climb is at least on a Xbox 360 controller, it's a little bit harder to control than it is with a keyboard and mouse. Uh, I do run suppressors uh, fairly often. Um, I'm a big flanker, uh, so staying off the radar helps a lot. Um, it says it reduces bullet velocity and increased bullet drop. That's true, um, but if you're flanking, uh, usually you're within medium to close range anyway, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, for my underbarrel, um, on most assault rifles, I'm either running the stubby or the potato grip. They do the exact same thing. And this just helps, uh, increase the, uh, the accuracy. Um, some guns, uh, more of the bullpup design weapons, um, they're not quite as accurate, but they've got a good hip fire and you can complement that with either the ergo grip or the vertical grip. That'll help increase, uh, hip fire. Um, one of the other guns that I tend to run if I'm not using the CZ805, uh, I kind of enjoy the L85, and, uh, as you see, I don't have my, uh, my Cobra unlocked yet, so unfortunately I'm stuck using the red dot. Uh, laser sight, once again, to complement that increased hip fire on the bullpup, and then, uh, the ergo grip, which helps. Um, so let's see, what else here? Oh, pistols. Um, I pretty much ran the P226 until I got the 1911. I really enjoyed the 1911, being able to drop somebody. I think the damage on it is, uh, I want to say it's 44 or 45 damage. Um, and that's up close, of course. Um, so dropping someone and, you know, if they're wounded, two, three shots, I mean, it's, it's nice. You can usually go through two, sometimes three targets. Um, and you can customize that any way you want. I prefer the ghost ring. I don't like the, uh, the mini red dot sights for them. Um, on my 1911, I ran the suppressor a lot. Um, so I used the 1911 until I got my 93R, and that's been a, uh, not quite a game changer for me, but that's been uh, a great backup when you get in those oh shit scenarios. Swap into that, and the, if you look... See, once again, I use the ghost ring. Uh, laser sight, because this thing is a hip fire machine with that laser sight. You don't even need to aim down sights. You'd be surprised. And then the muzzle brake, which helps with the, uh, uh, the, the the muzzle climb on it. So it is a burst weapon. So if you're, if you're bump firing it, it, it can climb pretty quickly. So um, Let's see. Uh, from I run the medic bag. That's standard. I won't ever, ever get rid of the medic bag. 
Uh, I use it anytime if I'm in a corner or if I'm injured and running. As I'm running, I'll throw the med pack down to kind of give me a little boosted heal on the way to wherever I'm going. Um, it's also good to throw down in packs of friendlies, especially if uh, um, they're taking a lot of flak or you're capping a flag and there's a lot of incoming grenades. It's a good way to get points up quick. Um, I haven't messed too much. Uh, I run the defib pretty standard, although I'm not a big noob tuber. I don't believe in it, and I get more use out of the defib than I do out of the, uh, the grenade launcher. So uh, I might try messing around with the M26 mass and uh, let you guys know how I how that works for me. Grenades V40. I won't run anything else. Uh, a lot of people use the impacts, but Having three grenades and being able to throw them faster and further is, well, shit, you get three of them. What more do you need to know? Uh, field upgrades. Um, I find that I tend to go through ammo quite a bit. And since a lot of people don't run support for some reason in Battlefield 4, uh, getting that extra ammo <clears throat> is, uh, excuse me, is uh, really, really helpful. Um, so, and, you know... Camouflage, it's a fucking waste, let's be honest. Anyone who says, oh, you're not using the desert camel in the desert, they're going to see you, you're full of shit. They're going to see you no matter what camel you're running. The, the detail is good enough that unless someone's literally hiding in a bush, you're going to see him coming. So, I don't know. Whatever camel you want. Uh, moving on to the engineer. Now, this is kind of a... a Oh, I forgot to mention, on the assault, I pretty much only run um, assault rifles. The only time I ever run a shotgun is on um, Operation Locker, or Locker Room, whichever one's called. And in which case, I run the UTS-15. I'm not a big um, semi-auto fan. I think it's a bit cheese. So on my UTS, I'm, I like the pump action. Uh, Having 15 rounds, you can't you can't beat it. Um, I run the tack light once again, Cobra. Uh, I use the full choke because I like the uh, tighter spread, and then I just use standard buckshot. Uh, I was messing around with the slugs, but to be honest, you uh, y you can get more damage out of the buckshot, and even if you miss, you're still getting some damage on target. So uh, until they, well, if they patch the slugs, it might be better. But until then. Uh, just run standard buckshot, and whatever you do, do not run that stupid duckbill crap. That, that's a waste. So, engineer. Uh, we'll start with the PDWs. For PDWs, uh, I was using the MP, the UMP9 for a while. Um, the recoil on it's pretty easy to control, but quite honestly, once you get the UMP45, I don't really see any reason to use anything else. The hip fire on it is awesome. Um, once again, Cobra. I use the laser light combo. It doesn't matter. I'll never run anything else other than a laser on this. I use the muzzle brake, sometimes suppressor, depending on what mood I'm in. And once again, the vertical grip to help with um, shooting while moving and or hip fire. Uh, the UMP, I want to say the Damage on it is, well, it's higher than all the other PDWs. I'm not quite sure. I'll, so being able to drop somebody in three shots instead of four is nice. It does, however, have a slow rate of fire. Um, yeah, it's 600. Most of the other PDWs are, you know, 700 plus. So I don't know. This thing's an animal. Anytime I'm using a PDW, it's pretty much the UMP-45. Um, on some maps, though, I will use a carbine, obviously. My two favorites are the Ace-21 CQB and the M4. Um, I like the M4 for the... Um, the burst, I actually find, is works really, really well for me. A lot of people don't like it. I also like the Ace-21. Uh, run it with any optic that you prefer. Um, once again, I don't like the, the dots, so Reflex or Coyote, I don't like. Once I get the Cobra, I'll probably use it, but in the meantime, I'm using this HD33. 
uh, laser sight just because there's no need to run anything else. Nothing else is going to benefit you quite as much as a laser sight will. Uh, I use the muzzle brake once again to help uh, the stability on that, uh, that climb, even though there's not a whole lot. The recoil on this is pretty much straight up and down. Excuse me. And then I use um, the potato grip. Just help increase, uh, tighten up that accuracy a little bit. Um, it also has 35 in a magazine. So it's kind of like a, like a Galil. So, I mean, 35 in a magazine, I mean, you can get two, three people without having to reload. So... As long as you can train yourself to not reload after every kill, this is a, a really, really decent weapon um, with a fire rate of 770. So it's it's not quite as fast as some of the others, but it's not the slowest either. And it's kind of middle of the pack, but with 35 rounds and an easy to control recoil, this is probably my favorite um, carbine or carbine, however you care to say it. Uh, moving on to, so, oh, sorry, gadgets. Uh, the SRA. Um, I won't use anything else. Um, being able to wire guide is great. Um, a lot of people, I mean, I see the use for the RPG and the small. I just fire and forget, and as long as you're leading your target right, it's good to go. But the SRA, in my opinion, is probably the, the, the best. Um, you can take out air with it if you're if you're good with the wire guide. Uh, being able to hit tanks as they retreat is always fantastic. Um, I actually use this as my sniper weapon with my engineer. If someone's at distance, I'll just pull out my SRA and take them out. Uh, stingers and iglas, you can use them. I think they're dirty. They're cheap, so I'd rather take someone out with a SRA. It's in a helicopter, it's much more satisfying anyway. For Gadget 2, um, depending if I'm playing with friends, and uh, I have some friends who are really good uh, scout heli pilots, uh, I'll run a repair tool. Um, but I would say 8 out of 10 times, I run the M2 Slam, uh, which is great for uh, taking out vehicles, obviously. It's kind of like an M5, the anti-tank mine, except it'll take 3 instead of 2 to uh, destroy uh, heavy vehicles such as a tank. Um, you can also kind of use it as like a, uh, what I call a ghetto C4. You can throw them on the sides of vehicles like a C4. Um, it'll take three instead of two. And uh, they're kind of on like a weird uh, timer slash motion sensor delay. So once you throw them on a tank, you want to get the hell out of there and just be patient and eventually they will blow up. Or uh, you can do what I do, and I'll throw two of these bad boys on a tank, take a step back, and then uh, hit them with my SRA, and all three will blow up and tank out a tank pretty quick. Uh, once again, the V40 minis, and once again, offensive. Um, having, I don't know, having additional mines running the anti-tank would be nice, but other than that, there, there's no real need for me to run anything other than offensive. Um, that extra ammo is an absolute must. Like I said, no one runs support with an ammo box. So, uh, Speaking of support, for my primary, um, I highly recommend the 249. I'm kind of, in, I'm kind of torn between the, the 249 and the MG4. Um, the 249 is, it's, I mean, it's, it's paved the way for the U.S. military for a long time. And in, as such, in Battlefield, it's a great, arguably, I would say, probably the best uh, LMG. Um, I tend to equip this the same as my MG4. So, Cobra, Laser, uh, Muzzle Brake, and Potato. And, uh, I don't know, it's really easy to control recoil. Um, it's got a little side-to-side. Uh, -side. So that's why I use, uh, or excuse me, I'm thinking of the MG4 here. The MG4 has a little bit of side to side, which I didn't notice until it was brought to my attention. So for my uh, barrel, I use the compensator to reduce the side to side recoil, and I've actually had a, a much more enjoyable time with the MG4. 
this along with the 249 both have 800 rounds, um, which is nice. So you can kind of compete with um, some of the uh, assault rifles and uh, PEWs or even the carbines even in a close range. Uh, I don't recommend it, but it is doable. Um, taking out stuff with a LMG at range, anything past medium range can be kind of difficult, even if you are using the right optic for it. Um, so you want to try to stay in, uh, you know, that medium to close, because up close you're going to do more, you're going to out damage the PDWs and the carbines. So that's, uh, you kind of want to stay in that medium close, but if you get in too close, you know, that you can lose to uh, guns with higher rates of fire, such as some of the PDWs that shoot at 900 plus rounds. Once again, 93R. I run the ammo box. Um, the, using the, the airburst is more of a hassle to me to switch it out and to use it properly. So, I mean, let's be honest. Airburst, I don't know, it's kind of a, a noob weapon, in my opinion. Yeah, it works great for taking out snipers, I guess. But then you're kind of open to get shot in the face. So I tend to stay away from the 25s. Uh, claymores are, I guess, they're more situational. I guess you can use them to defend. Um, maybe I just suck with them, but I tend to notice once I put a claymore, I'll die and then have to go put that claymore back. So it, it's, I don't run them. I don't like them. I find the ammo, uh, the C4 and the ammo box to be uh, tried and true. And the mortars are a waste. They do such little damage. You're not going to be able to, if even if you hit something, you're not going to be able to uh, to kill them, even with a direct impact. It'll take two mortar rounds, and by that time, if they're smart, they've moved. Moving on to this. Now, this is something I wanted to, uh, to try around with. I saw a guy who was gunning for an LAV get into an LAV fight, and he got out and put this in front of his buddy's LAV, and it absorbed an enormous amount of rounds. So this could be fun for defending, but once again, this is more situational versus um, the ammo box and the C4, which are going to help you in all situations. Um, if you were playing um, Rush, um, the MP APS might be better for you. Also, the Claymore might be better for Rush. But since I play a lot of uh, Conquest, there, there's uh, there's no, no use for them, really, in my opinion. Uh, V40 Minis, once again. And I don't know why that's on indirect fire. That should be on... Oh, that's why. Um, ammo bag. This allows me to put down uh, double the ammo boxes, which I found to be helpful if you're looking to uh, level up. Excuse me. So you can uh, place one ammo box down with your buddies, and then you still have got one to uh, supply yourself if need be, or supply more people. So that's why I have indirect fire. Uh, running offensive on this. Um, I don't know. It's probably all right. I should give it a try. I should play with these a little bit more, but um, running offensive on this isn't really going to help you much since the biggest perks are ammo and grenades. But since you're running the uh, ammo box, you can supply yourself with those anyway. So um, running in, I would say run indirect fire or defensive um, if you're going to run anything. Uh, moving on to recon, the SRR61. Um, up until that was unlocked, I used the CSLR4 uh, until I unlocked the 338 Recon, and then once I unlocked the SRR, I haven't used anything else. Um, if you're using anything else, it's probably because you're working up to the SRR61. So, I just use the 8x scope, um, and let's be honest with it. 20 times, 40 times, what a joke. You're, you're not going to be able to use that anyway. Uh, I actually like to run the canted iron sights. Um, running a flashlight or laser is just going to give you away. Uh, I know a lot of people run the variable zoom, which uh, is good for long distance sniping. Um, I can't do it. Um, I'm too impatient. Um, to me, it's, I like to play more of a, an aggressive sniper. So I tend to run the canted iron sights, and what this allows me to do is actually go into objectives um, in that medium to kind of close range where your 8x scope is going to be too close, 
especially your candid iron sights, and as long as you hit them once, you know, you can always uh, swap out to your pistol and finish them off. So, canted iron sights for me. Uh, the barrel, there's, it's a bolt action. What, what more do you need? I wouldn't run suppressor. You're going to lose a lot of that range. And that, you know, that's your advantage is, a, is, is running a recon with a bolt action is your range, right? So, uh, suppressor, what a waste. Muzzle brake. Okay, it reduces muzzle climb, but it's bolt action, and by the time you've rechambered another round, you've already reset. You're, you know, your, your optics already come back down to zero. So, honestly, running anything, a uh, flash hider would be probably be the only thing I would run. Um, suppressors, I'll never run them on a bolt action. So, I would say the only thing worthwhile running would be a flash hider, because why not? And then we get here... Straight pull. I mean, your option between a bipod and straight pull, really. Straight pull all the way. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, I run the 93R on all my kits. Um, I think I'm going to play around with uh, running the Compact 45. It has the same damage output as the 1911, but it holds um, seven more rounds. Wow. So why not? Same damage, more bullets. I'm game. So... That's all I got for you today. Um, this is just a quick down and dirty. Um, another time I will uh, go over my vehicles and uh, how I've got them played out. So uh, until next time, gentlemen.